In this video, I'm going to cover the differences between being a pathologist assistant and an autopsy tech. There are some overlap between the two, but there's also some major differences you should know about if you are considering becoming a pathologist assistant or an autopsy tech. Hey, my name is Luke. I'm a pathologist assistant working in Western Canada and Let's get into it. So first off, let's talk about being an autopsy tech. An autopsy tech or an autopsy technician, a morgue attendant, or even a deaner. These are people who typically will work in a morgue, a coroner's office, or a medical examiner's office. And they are someone who's assisting a pathologist with various parts of the autopsy process. They're typically involved in things like moving bodies in and out of the fridge, accepting bodies from transport individuals, or releasing bodies to a funeral home. They also are taking measurements, weighing bodies, collecting body fluids like toxicology samples. They could also be involved in taking some diagnosis diagnostic imaging or dental x-rays. And then finally, the sort of main bulk part of their job is assisting in the actual evisceration part of the autopsy. Now this evisceration part is literally taking and removing organs from the body and passing them on to the pathologist. The autopsy tech is not involved in forming a preliminary diagnosis or signing off on the case. Typically once they have performed the evisceration, resutured the body and put it back in the fridge, that's kind of their bulk involvement in the autopsy case. After that, there's pretty much cleanup. And from there on out, that, that's about it as far as they go. For educational requirement, typically you'll need a bachelor's degree in some kind of science-based course. This could be in forensic science, mortuary, or funeral science. Now second, let's take a look at what a pathologist assistant does. Like the autopsy tech, a pathologist assistant does assist during autopsy and will perform a lot of similar duties as the autopsy tech. They'll be moving bodies in and out of the fridge, again assisting with the autopsy itself, so the evisceration process, perhaps taking photographs, as well as the general cleanup. However, a pathologist assistant is typically only involved in hospital autopsy cases. So these are medical deaths or cases that don't typically go to a medical examiner's office. And the pathologist assistant may also be involved in writing up the preliminary report or the gross findings uh, during the autopsy case. Although this is something that I personally don't do at my site. In addition to this morgue and autopsy training, a pathologist assistant is also trained to do surgical specimen dissection. So they'll be receiving tissue from surgical suites, doing dissections, describing their gross uh, or findings that they can see with their eyes, and working alongside pathologists and sometimes surgeons as well. Now this work has more direct diagnostic implications because the person is typically still alive when you receive a specimen from them. So a lot of your work has implications for how the person is going to be treated or whether or not whatever surgical process they've had is curative. You're also typically involved in reviewing their medical records before you actually start working on a case. You'll have to review some diagnostic imaging. You may be collecting additional tissue samples from a primary specimen for extra testing and you'll also be sometimes performing specimen discards. Typically PAs are involved in hospital hospital labs, private labs, or teaching labs. As far as educational requirements go for a pathologist assistant, you must graduate from a NACLS accredited training institution, and then following that you have to pass a ASCP or CCCPA certification exam, and this will grant you the pathologist assistant title. Acceptance into an ACLIS program typically requires a science-based bachelor's degree, sometimes with prerequisite courses in things like biology, chemistry, anatomy, physiology, and organic or inorganic chemistry. In addition to that, you'll also need some reference letters and shadowing hours to go along with your application. Now, the major similarities between the two jobs are both autopsy techs and pathologist assistants can work in morgues or at medical examiner's office and they will perform the bulk of the evisceration process before handing things off to a pathologist for final diagnosis and cause of death. However, the major differences that you're going to see are, first of all, higher educational requirements for a pathologist assistant. The PAs are also trained to do surgical specimen dissection, so that has more kind of clinical relevance. And because of that higher level training and greater scope of practice, the salary for pathologist assistants are typically higher than that for autopsy techs as well. Are these the differences you were expecting, or are there other things that you were wondering about? Let me know down in the comments below if you do. And if you're looking for more of an in-depth look at what a pathologist assistant does during the day, check out this video here. Thanks, and I'll catch you next time. Next time.